from Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube. Covering SAP Sapphire Now 2018. Brought to you by NetApp. Welcome to theCUBE, I'm Lisa Martin. We are with Keith Townsend. We are in Orlando in the NetApp booth at SAP Sapphire 2018, joined by the CIO of NetApp, Bill Miller. Bill, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, great to be here, really appreciate it. So NetApp, 26 year old company, uh, you guys have been on a big transformation journey. Give us a, some nuggets of NetApp's transformation story. Yeah, it's a it's really a, a fascinating story, and it all it all centered around the customer. And, and going back a couple of years, when we realized the story was evolving from a storage story and a storage history to a data a data centric story going forward. We spent a lot of time listening to our customers. We listened to them in in briefing center meetings. We listened to them through uh, strategic customer account uh, sessions, and. and we really were drawn to this notion of providing outcomes for our customers rather than providing storage long-term. Storage, uh, like all other appliances, ironically in the name of the company, and a very well-established respected company, Network Appliance, it was not going to be about appliances in the future, it was going to be about data management and leveraging the value of that data for our customers. So our transformation was about bringing that journey to life and giving customers choice, giving our customers choice. Choice around where their data resides and how they utilize that data and how they leverage that data for their customers. Uh, so as we listened and, and we kind of absorbed the impact of this, it became clear that for the foreseeable future, we were gonna, gonna live in a hybrid cloud world. And, and really what I mean by that is our, our large uh, established customers were going to have very consequential private cloud data centers for a long time to come. Right? They had very large complex applications that serve their customer communities. They weren't going to be able to pick up those large applications and move them quickly to the cloud. So they were going to run in high intensity private cloud, very efficient data centers. But at the same time, they were looking to transform digitally, to go on this digital transformation journey. And the vast majority of them wanted to lean in to the hyperscaler clouds, the cloud suppliers, and build their, their future strategic applications in the cloud. And it became clear to us that, that their data was now going to be bifurcated. It was going to reside in their on-prem facilities, but critical, mission critical, and advantageous data was also going to sit out there in the hyperscaler cloud. And, and a company like NetApp could build this data fabric to connect them seamlessly so that the customers have choice. I mean, that's really what was behind the initiative to transform NetApp. So as we talk about that transformation, NetApp identified the opportunity. Yes. Identified, looked at the pro product portfolio, looked at the right. gaps, right. Right. identified where they needed to go. Right. NetApp, the company, needed to go to a digital transformation itself. Yeah. So yeah. as a SAP customer, right. as a NetApp customer, That's right. as a as the person responsible for enabling developers, the uh, app application teams, product teams yeah. to, to execute on that digital transformation. Right, right. What were some of the what were some of the challenges, yeah. lessons yeah. learned yeah. Yeah. as the CIO of NetApp that you uh, experience. It's a, it's an awesome question. Let me. You kind of went from we're going to transform for our customers to what I did to or my teams and and myself did to enable that. There's a middle step, which is all of our business partners in the company. You know whether that's finance or sales or marketing, having to realign their business processes to this new need. So let me give you an example on the sales, the go-to-market function. You know, we, we call this a go-to-market, a go-to-market motion, you know, how you sell. Well, if you're selling an appliance, you know, a piece of hardware with some software with it, that's one very well-defined and familiar motion. If you're going to sell software solutions, if you're going to sell advanced professional services that advise our customers on how to leverage data. Those are very different motions that you have to enable to be successful. So what that means is taking that set of business processes 
that, that are unfamiliar to us. You know, when a customer wants to buy our products on a pay-as-you-go, a consumption model, rather than a capitalization acquisition, that's a whole different set of processes we have to put in place behind the scenes. Financial processes, legal processes, and of course, IT systems. So it started with the business functions, figuring out how they were going to transform their workflows. And then IT had to come in underneath and say, do we have the systems, the tools, the platforms like SAP and other partner provided platforms to enable that and, and make those workflows come to life? So it was really a partnership across the whole enterprise. And, it, and if you really listen to our CEO, George Curie, and George will tell you, this transformation affected every single employee and every single leader in the corporation. It was a major change for us to figure out you know, how are you going to take a business steaming in this direction and turn them 45 degrees on a dime and quickly embrace those new processes and mobilize them through new systems, tools, and platforms. So this was a wholesale change to the corporate. I mean, it was a burn the ships model. We're never going back. <laughs> this is the new way of doing business for NetApp. Very exciting and at the beginning a daunting journey. Yeah, Nothing we, less than that. We had Dave Hitz on the Cube during uh, NetApp Insight last year. And one of the things that he said, he had to come in and say and tell the, the ONTAP engineers, ONTAP in the cloud is okay. Yes. Right. We, we, we're NetApp and we can burn down what we've done before right. and do it again. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll make that journey. So it, it's, in, it's enlightening to hear that uh, NetApp was willing to burn down the old stuff. Yes to yes. build the new. Yeah. So as we talk about that new, yeah. what are the major drivers as you're talking to other CIOs, right. you know, they I'm sure the sales team wants more of your time than you can give. And very perceptive, <laughs> very perceptive team. And you're talking to CIOs, what is that conversation? Like what yeah. what are they what yeah. what what jewels are they trying to get out of you? So so you know we spend a lot of time with our customers. One of the, the, the enjoyable parts of my job is my customers are my peers. Our customers are my peers. So I get to spend a lot of time looking at what's on their agenda. They're driven by two passions almost globally and consistently across the industry. They're driven by a desire to move to the cloud, to move to the cloud aggressively for flexibility, to take advantage of these new marketplaces that the hyperscalers are, are offering. Hyperscalers and their partners, I mean, if you come out to our home base in Silicon Valley, what you see, all the startup companies are being designed in the cloud functionality. So that's where a lot of the new R&D and the new IP is being created. So my peers want to invest more heavily in the cloud. And the second thing they want to do is enable digital transformation real digital transformation. How do they monetize the wealth of the data that they've acquired through their relationships with their customers? And then how do they leverage that for their customer benefit? That's what digital transformation really means to CIOs. And how do I engage in the cloud to do that? So when we looked at that, we said, okay, the story's about data. It's, it's digital transformation around data and it's enabling that cloud journey for our customers at a rate of consumption that's acceptable and digestible to them, right? Because every customer has a different rate of motion to the cloud, and, and, and depending on their industry type and their degree of risk and, and, and uh, enthusiasm to embrace change, they're in different places. So we had to be very flexible in guiding different customers in different industries to that cloud database journey, and, and uh, so that's why we have to spend an awful lot of time listening to our customers to help them do that. Did you find during this time where not only are you having to burn some ships down and mm -hmm. transform mm -hmm. yourself while still transacting business that's in right. a competitive that's way, exactly right. did you find customers going, all right, so NetApp's talking about data is key, data fabric, are you going away from storage? <laughs> How? Did you find that was a question that was commonly asked? And if so, how are they responding now to NetApp's transformation? That's a great question. Let, let, let me get back to that as you know, NetApp going away from storage and, and it's something both of you said. This, this journey of transformation, you can do transformation a number of ways, but the two common ways are, I do it and I'm done. In other words, I get through the fiery pit and I'm on the other side. I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that's over, okay? That's not the nature of our company. It, it is a, what George would call it, a culture 
of transformation, right? It's about being willing to change direction as we need to change direction and go in this dynamic world. So Based on the customers, what they think, exactly. not what as a company. Net exactly, up. and we're in one of the most dynamic areas of high tech, when you look at data and you look at the cloud and the solution. So we realize it's not over. We haven't transformed and we're done. We're in transformation 2.0, which is the whole next generation. And most of our leadership team is very comfortable with the discomfort associated with continually transforming Comfortably ourselves. uncomfortable. Yeah, and I think it takes a certain kind of person to lead in our company and you have to be bold. You have to be bold and want to do that, okay? So, George gave some emotional examples last year of data-driven uh, capability. In order to make these transformations, NetApp itself has to be driven by data. That's right. What are some of the key capabilities as a CIO that you've given the business to be data-driven? George can't make these right. decisions right. unless he has data. Right. What 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 new capability has NetApp provided, well, George? I'll give you an example. Sitting here uh, at this wonderful SAP conference, you know, we rolled out uh, SAP C4C Hybris this past year. Uh, a big journey for us. We were on a separate platform. Uh, we knew we needed to build these new uh, workflows into our day-to-day -day processes. And as we thought about what potential solutions would be to kind of break the mold from where we were and move forward. We really like the SAP HANA platform. We think the, high pl the HANA platform, very dynamic, you know, in memory, high performance computing platform that's built on a NetApp framework, right? It's a NetApp high performance infrastructure with an in memory processing capability that, that's second to none in my opinion. So we looked at, at data availability, reporting, insights that we could get, and the commitment from our partners to continue to evolve in insights. So you know, you, you hear about Leonardo here and some of the AI and machine learning platforms that are being developed. We felt like that HANA platform would give us a lot of flexibility in the future to be data driven, to pull data, and to do it fast and dynamically uh, to help our business make the right decisions going forward. I'm curious, as we finish up here, how influential is, is NetApp's transformation? And you're right, it's it's a journey, right? It's when you get to a destination, oh, and now we're an intelligent enterprise, if yeah. only. Yeah. How impactful and influential has NetApp's transformation been on we really continuing to establish NetApp's relevance in your customer base? Is that Have you seen that like make, yes. make deals yes. happen because look yeah. what they've done? Yeah, a couple of things I'll say to that. First of all, Customers admire companies that are bold and that really want to lean into technology and make change. So our journey of transformation is absolutely a fascinating one for our customers. They feel like if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to change dynamically on the behalf of your customers, we got a lot more confidence that you're serious about what you're doing and you're committed to the future. So number one, they love. Number two, they just want to know how to transform themselves. So any nuggets they can take away from our journey and reuse and position in their business for future success is, is much appreciated. And then, and then the third thing I would say, and it gets back to an earlier question you asked, um, you know, as we give them more choice, as we give them a choice to either advance their current data center with, with high-performing flash or build a really cost-effective, high-performing private cloud with converged infrastructure or really venture out into that digital transformative space of the hyperscalers, we're giving them choice every day. So we're not afraid to offer them data management solutions in all three of those environments, and not only choice by going out to a hyperscaler, an AWS or an Azure or a Google Cloud platform, but to be able to choose multiple cloud supplier platforms. So they can put some workloads in Azure, some workloads in GCP, and, and, and get a confident feeling that NetApp's going to be there for them in any of those platforms, in any of those configurations. They really feel more confident when they hear that story. And I would argue to some degree, they're more likely to buy our traditional storage if they feel confident of our future vision in the enablement to allow them to succeed with that future vision. So it's, it's been well received at that level. NetApp, bold, I love it, Bill. I think we are. Thanks so much for stopping by, and now you're a CUBE alumni, so congratulations. Well, thank you, and I hope to come back sometime. Absolutely, we'd love to have you back. Thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend and the NetApp booth at SAP Sapphire 2018. Thanks for watching.